Hello everybody, welcome back to some more Planet Coaster Alpha 3. It's here, we're done, we're finally finished and we'll be touring Eternity Park, our time travel and history based theme park. Our first park we did in Alpha 3 and I freaking loved how it came out. Let's jump right in. So for the entrance of the park I just wanted something real simple. Just some nice random plant decorating with some little walls and lanterns, just random things I felt like doing. And then we have our weird little ball of wheels kind of in the center with the water shooting now. It's supposed to be like an earth or something with some blue and some green lights on it. Just some, just, I was just trying some new things. Just trying to jumpstart my brain and give myself, uh, give me some ideas for the rest of the park and just the game in general. The first area in Eternity is Prehistoric Peak. It is meant to be just a general prehistoric land with dinosaurs and caves and I guess this doesn't really make sense that there's fire because it wouldn't be people, but whatever, we're just we're just having fun. Right at the beginning we have our sleepy little dragon. I love the animatronic dragons, they're so cool. And again, I know the dragons, they're not dinosaurs, but they're the closest thing we could get to dinosaurs. And I actually think it came out looking pretty cool. And then for the buildings in this area, we were basically just doing very simple designs, basically just plopping down the buildings and then wrapping them in rocks to try and give them a real like natural feel or kind of cave feel instead of any sort of actual structures. And then heading down Prehistoric Peak, on the right we have a burger stand, another one just kind of simply wrapped in rocks. And we have some uh, kind of bonfires laid all throughout, just because I wanted to do those instead of actual lights or anything, just because I feel like they'd fit the theme a little bit better. And then we have our first ride in the park, the Rocktopus. I was trying to so find something that would uh, match the theme a little bit, and I thought this was the closest one we could get. So we have just the entire area just wrapped in rocks. Wow, that music is loud. <laughs> but it is a pretty cool looking ride. I like it. Again, just painted it black to kind of just blend it in, but you can imagine instead of an octopus, it's some sort of prehistoric animal. Well, I guess there maybe were octopuses back then? Octopi? I'm not entirely sure. I don't know how old this species is, but yeah, real simple. A lot of rocks in this area just because I wanted to avoid using any actual building pieces. And then just past the Rocktopus, we have our dinosaurs. I mean, dragons. I love that they're submerged in the water. Uh, we have this little lake here with our little makeshift waterfall. Unfortunately, the water in this game does not behave like a fluid, so it does not fall or does anything according to gravity. So we just have some water spouts just pointing the water down. Uh, but these guys came up pretty cool. I didn't realize they were perfectly in sync. Huh. And then right next to the little lake, we have our first coaster in the park. It is uh, Dino Danger. Again, just basically wrap the whole coaster bay in rocks. But let's go and take a ride. And off we go. And I remember saying previously in videos and everything that I wanted to work on my coaster building because especially in the previous parks like Seatopia and Kings Lake. Well, I guess we only had one in Kings Lake, but still. My coaster building skills were not that great. I am the first to admit it. And even though the fact that I admit that and say it pretty often, ah, oh, it's a dinosaur, I still get people uh, talking trash about my coaster skills a lot. And I'd like to think as we progress in this park, they definitely got quite a bit better. Even this first one was quite an improvement off my previous ones. Uh, but I, I, I'm enjoying the coaster building aspects. You guys know I tend to gravitate more towards the actual uh, design. Oh yeah, these, these first couple ones don't have brakes. <laughs> oh yeah. But I tend to gravitate more towards the design aspects of the game, but I am trying to focus more on the coasters, and I think we've made uh, some good steps and improvements towards uh, improving our coaster designs in this park. And I'm excited to do future coasters now. And then leaving Prehistoric Peak, we just have a nice rock-covered bathroom, and we have our first time tunnel. So I didn't have these at the beginning of the park, so going into Prehistoric Peak or going into uh, far, far Flung Future, but I think that's okay, because I think they kind of work better as a transition between the areas instead of like a starting point. But next up we got the Greek Grotto. I love how all these pillars and everything came out. It looks really cool. Right at the entrance we have our information booth and then a burger place just kind of surrounded by uh, some pillars and a simple Greek structure. And over here is something I did off camera, which is I added a path because people were getting all congested over in the corner, uh, or kind of around this building. So I decided to add this path and people ended up actually taking it. So I'm pretty happy they uh, started doing that. It's a nice way to alleviate some of the traffic we had here because previously this whole area was just completely full. The building on our right is a restroom. It's a rather grand looking restroom. And then in here, we actually have a drink stand. Uh, let's see if we can get there. That guy looks really bored. I don't know why he looks so bored. Everybody looks bored. Why does everybody look so bored? But it's kind of like a simple little uh, garden with a atrium in the center. There's our restroom. And next up we have the first ride in the Greek out of the Star Wheel. 
Very simple, it's basically just a giant ferris wheel. But I like this entrance. I like doing these cool little garden areas uh, in the entrances of rides. I, I do it pretty often just because I think it, it dresses up the place nice and gives, uh, gives, gives some separation for the area and again just something to look at. Comes out looking real nice. And then next up we have Mount Olympus, the coaster for the Greek Grotto. I love this building. Looks so very cool. Oh, again, not at all historically accurate. The yada yada yada. I'm not going for historical accuracy. Yada yada yada. I love this coaster design too with these eagles. They are pretty, pretty cool looking. And this coaster kind of came out similar to the one in Seatopia where we built, um, what was it? Oh my god, I can't remember the name. This one we did like the Himalayan village coaster. What did we call it? I don't remember what I named it. Was it was it just Coaster Mountain? It might have just be Coaster Mountain, but it's similar. Basically, you have a coaster kind of just work its way to the top and then kind of zoom its way around. Oh, we didn't look at the volcano. Oh, there's a volcano over there in uh, Prehistoric Peak. <laughs> Forgot to look at that, but there we go. We have our little temple up at the top with some fire. And then basically just wrap our way around the coaster as we go. This thing is strange, this coaster, just because you're so far away from the track, you're not directly over it, because you're kind of held out over the side, so it kind of looks like you're going to smack it into the side of the mountain a lot. Actually, I, I'm pretty sure at one point, you do actually just smack it into the side. Well, you hit, like, a, one of the pillars, or I think one of the coaster rails above you. Like that, bam. <laughs> oh, you're dead. That would be rather painful, and why would they build a track like that? I don't know, but there's no real way to move that, so, uh, oh well. I'll get over it. So there's a bunch of loops around the mountain, a couple helixes, and then one final loop. And then we bank around here, and did I put brakes on here? No, I didn't put brakes on this one. Okay, so, bam. People's necks just snapped from the G-forces. But there you go, that is the Greek Grotto. Came out pretty nice, if you ask me. I really enjoyed it. It was a little frustrating just because the, the stucco columns do not snap to grids very well, so you kind of have to place them. One by one, and it was a little tricky getting them all lined up, but overall, I think the Greek Grotto came out pretty good. And now, through another time tunnel into whoop, Medieval Midway. It's the middle section of the park. Really like how this area came out. This might be my favorite. I'm going to have a poll in the uh, description for you guys to go vote on which is your favorite part of the park. But first up, we have a little Venetian coaster, a nice little garden area going through it, and I love the walls all surrounding this area. I think it looks really nice, as well as the addition of more water features, because besides the lake and a prehistoric peak, we haven't had too many water features yet, but plenty of water in this area. Look at those reflections. Looks very nice. And then just after the Venetian coaster, we head down our medieval main street, where we have a medical office, and I think there's a food stand, drink stand, and I don't think there's a restroom in this one. I think it's just those three, but really like how this whole area came out. Had a lot of fun building with all these little details, and I would like to eventually do a fairy tale theme park. That might be something we will definitely do in the future because I love building in this style. I mean, just look at that little blacksmith right there. That's very cool. I love how that came out. And then across from the main street, we have our teacups ride. Again, just a nice simple garden area, which for some reason really reminds me of like miniature golf. Maybe it's all the little ponds and everything in between, but. I felt the teacup and the, uh, the, the Venetian carousel really matched the theme of this area. And then finally in this park we have Castle Coaster. And I wanted it to become daytime because I wanted you guys to fully appreciate how awesome this thing is. Look at it. I went with a lot less detail than I normally do, like just all over the walls. Just because I thought these, uh, these castle walls actually look pretty good on their own. And I mean, I didn't want to add too much to it, but oh man, this came out looking so cool. I love how this looks, love the colors, love how the coaster kind of winds its way through it. And now it was a little disappointing how it kind of just busts through the wall back here, but I don't mind it too much. It gives you a little preview of Sarsaparilla Hills over there. <laughs> uh, if, if there was some, like, some damage blocks or something, that'd be cool. I could make it look like it busts through the castle wall, but again, not too bad looking. Gives you a nice overview of the entire park so far. And I love this first drop we just passed by, the little knights there. Hello. And down we go. Really like this coaster. It's very short. That's one criticism I've seen a lot is my coasters tend to be relatively short. My problem is I keep trying to put them in a very cramped area to keep them in a location like with a mountain over there or with the coaster or the castle over here. So that's something I could also expand. And we got a little bit better with the coaster in Sarsaparilla Hills. It tends to be a little bigger and more spread out. And I think uh, it was a vast improvement in terms of just layout because it actually feels like a fully fledged coaster that's actually long enough 
And that is Medieval Midway. Again, this might be my favorite section of the park. I just love how contained it is and how densely detailed it is. And I just had a lot of fun detailing everything. I, I pretty much recorded both episodes in one day. So that was like eight or nine hours of just building a planet coaster. So my eyes hurt a little bit, but I love how it came out. Again, you can vote in the description of which is your favorite coaster design. They're not coaster design, which is your favorite uh, section design thus far. And then, once again, heading through Medieval Midway, through the time portal, we get to Sarsaparilla Hills, our western-themed area. Had a lot of fun with this one. It's fun to actually get to use cactus and saguaros this time, my native plant, my native land. <laughs> we just have a nice little uh, horse corral right to the left, or right to the right, I guess, not left. And then the first thing we have is the uh, desert coaster. So the coaster bay was basically just a uh, general use western building. The belt didn't really have a purpose. Kind of ended up looking like a saloon or something, or maybe some sort of town center. But I think it came out pretty nice. I love. I actually really like this coaster. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure why. I just think it works very well. It does turn a little bit too much to the right. <laughs> uh, pretty much the entire coaster is turning to the right. Uh, so that's something we could have improved on, and I'll definitely take into consideration in future coasters, but overall I think it came out pretty cool. It's nice to kind of zip around these hills in here. I'm glad I worked a lot more with the terrain, rather than just building it inside of an actual building. And adding those rocks around the entrances and exits of these sort of cave openings is something that I did recently off camera, but I really think it helps break up the land and makes it a little bit more cohesive since we do have these kind of these red rocks scattered all over the different areas of this section of the park. And then heading down the main street of uh, Sasper Hills, we have our little burger stand there. Nice little hill. And then we have a couple other rides in this area. Uh, this is Wild Blue, I think, though there wasn't a Wild Blue sign, so I used the Sky Ace sign, which seems to be very popular. Wow. This is a very busy area, but very cool looking. Someone actually pointed out the top of it looks like an oil rig or something, so it does match the theme a little bit when you can't see the little airplanes. <laughs> But I think it came out pretty cool looking. Have just some nice dress setting all around. A lot of plants, a lot of uh, wagons, little barns, things like that. And then over there we have the entrance to the uh, the uh, desert coaster. And then over here we have a re re relatively large building. It ended up just being a restroom, but I was trying to make it some sort of like Old West hotel. As you can uh, imagine, it has uh, two stories, a nice balcony, little touches of red. I really like how this building came out. Oh, kind of going through the wall here. And then we have the aeronauts. And I decided to dress up this area very similar to what we did. Uh, was it? It was, it was in Kings Lake uh, when we had the one flat ride outside of the main city. We just built our own little fence to kind of uh, contain the whole thing, and then we have a little pond right next to it. Again, I was just trying to pick rides that would fit the theme a little bit more. So we have some hot air balloons. Those were those were around during the times of the old west when we had a uh, lighter than air travel, definitely before 1903. But there you go. That is the end of Sarsaparilla Hills, then we just have some more cacti around, some soil, some prickly pears, some bushes. And then we head over into Zoom, another time tunnel. And finally ending in the far flung future, or F cubed, as I like to call it. Done a little bit more of this uh, off camera, as you guys have seen. I've worked on this for the past two episodes, but changed quite a bit. Uh, well, actually not quite a bit, mostly just adding lighting and some random uh, plants, things like that. But over here we have uh, two different sides. We have our Cosmic Cow drink stand, some fountains, a nice little lake, and some random architecture. <laughs> so just some sort of architectural interest is what I was going for. That would kind of uh, just be a motif or themed, kind of going throughout the whole area. Hey, those fountains are in sync now. Go me. And this is, has to be one of the uh, strangest ride designs I've seen in a while, or I have done in a while. Uh, we have the ride, the cube, and so I kind of went with that theme and just put these black and white cubes everywhere. And people were asking in their seat top, why, why are these cubes floating? I was like, well, this is the future, guys. And everything in the future floats. Like, <laughs> I guess. But I really love how this whole area came out. Just looks very interesting and abstract. And the little water features all around look pretty awesome. I definitely want to work more with this, uh, sort of man-made water features rather than just having them sunken in the ground because it just looks really cool I love how it came out you might just do a whole park kind of based on this just cubes everywhere so many cubes you won't even believe it and then heading past the cubes right down the far flung future main street we have on the left is a little greenhouse with a uh, restroom and a souvenir stand I think but I just love the look of the coaster from here this looks so nice it's kind of uh, it's the main feature of this area so it's super simple to see, or it just sticks out so well. Oh, and then we have our 
a little floating uh, spaceship here. It's, it's just a medical area. I think it's pretty cool. It was just a random idea I had. It came out all right. Definitely could be improved upon and worked with in the future. And then over here we have the future coaster. It's so cool. And someone actually pointed out something that I was thinking while I was building this. This really reminds me of like Beetlejuice when I see it for some reason. Maybe it's just like his black and white clothes. And this is our first launching coaster. Oh, that looks really cool. Oh, it looks awesome. <laughs> I love that. It was doing exactly what I hoped it would do with the black and white. It just kind of zooms right by. And then we have the uh, extra launches all the way across there. Flip it on over. So many flips and turns and all over this thing. And I try to make it feel really smooth. And there are some parts that are a little wonky or janky. But overall, I think it came out pretty good. Flipping over there. Oh, almost came to a complete stop. And down we go. Keep it going. Accelerate some more. One more turn. Yeah, that turn there. That, that banking was a little bit rough. Definitely smoother in these parts. But again, I think this is a step in the right direction for me in terms of coaster building. And I really enjoyed it. And I actually have brakes on this one, so they actually slow you down to stop you from snapping your neck upon entrance. And then finally we have the sundial ride. Just kind of set it around with uh, some glass walls and some trees and stuff. I really hope they eventually add actual glass to this game where it's somewhat translucent because that would definitely be cool and help me uh, want to build more indoor type building. But that is it for the far flung future. Had a ton of fun with this one. It was it was my favorite my favorite part about building these was just trying to make them very distinctive from each of the other areas which I think we accomplished just in terms of layout architecture and uh, color scheme I just I just had a ton of fun with this with this park in general and if you guys enjoyed the building of this park too left definitely let me know leave a like leave a comment just leave something letting me know this park will be available to download in the Steam workshop the link will also be in the description below thank you guys so much for supporting the series I had a ton of fun, and I know you guys did too because the channel has been growing greatly just from this park, and I can't wait to start the next park with you guys. So I'll see you next time for some more Planet Coaster. Bye.